Okay, Shalom, Shalom. Kwam ya sa'alo, koholo yimla, yawo, bahashim yawashai, bahashim raka hakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well, that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth, and just want to say the water toward the Akim and Akwaf. That's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to the best of their ability. This is Yah Hanan Nawaf just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And um, just wanted to touch on acknowledging our faults and sins, man, iniquity. Um, the Apostle Gabar, he always goes into, you know, our sins from our past lives because the scriptures does talk about uh, reincarnation. Us being here multiple times and there's no remembrance of it. You know, uh, we don't have any remembrance of, of the past lives that we've lived because the earth moves in a cycle, just like the sun and moon, moon moves in a cycle. Uh, summer, spring, fall moves in a cycle. Oceans move in cycles. Everything is a cycle. You know, you have people that are born and people that, are, that, that pass away. People that are born, people that pass away. And, and as time goes on, pretty much it's just, you know, that's a con continuing cycle of, of your life so to speak, you know, but I wanted to just touch on this because I was listening to, I listened to a, a few lessons today on, um, you know, you had the debate between um, the, uh, the older members of uh, Sakari, Hassad, and um, I think it was just Hassad. I did watch, you know, because I was watching um, the Apostle um, Tahar, he was going over it, and um, Captain um, Tazariak from um, ISUPK and one uh, Captain Tazariak he believes that we're in a new covenant already and of course Hassad was debating that we're not and you know pretty much we're in between because we still have sin uh, you know in these in these fleshly bodies you know and the scriptures talks about how you know the law statutes and commandments are going to be written on our minds and hearts and we're not going to sin no more you know what I'm saying once our completion, you know, when, when we go into the kingdom and our bodies are changed in the twinkling of an eye, roughly paraphrasing, we're not going to be sinning anymore. You know, and that's, uh, you know, you can get that account in Hebrews chapter eight. And you can get what was being spoken of in Hebrews chapter eight being repeated from Jeremiah chapter 31, I think that is. And uh, but anyway, this is what I was reading earlier, because as I was I was riding and I was listening to it and by the spirit. It just hit me in the spirit, you know what I'm saying, with this particular scripture right here. And so I'm just going to um, go into it and grab some precepts off of it. Psalms 32 and 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord Yahweh, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. So this is a selah. This is an ongoing process. This is something that we're doing daily because we're living in fleshly bodies and we sin every day. Certain things we can say, well, you know what, you know, I, you, I say, for instance, I approach a, a young lady and I'm like, you know, uh, you're single, you got a man. And she might say, yeah, I got a man. I'm like, OK, well, you know, I'm stepping off. Cool. But that I, that's something that's controllable, so to speak, you know. Where I'm like, oh, well, she got a man. Let me leave her alone. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, me pursuing her any further, that would be me, you know, disregarding that she has a man and, and lusting after her and going off into adultery, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? So some things we can't keep, like I, I got a beard, for instance. I can keep that law. You know what I'm saying? But still, that doesn't mean that we are perfect. Just because there's certain laws that we can keep, we're not perfect. You know what I'm saying? We still sin, whether thoughts, because, hey, look, this this mine. Shit be flowing through, you, through your head and be like, man, where the hell that thought come from? You know? So we're in these, these sinful bodies, man. You know? And, and the scriptures, act, the Lord said even um, our righteousness is as filthy rags. So has the, new, you know, and, and what the Apostle Gabar was saying was, was beautiful too because he was saying that the only real true person that would be, of, of, you know, fully in the new covenant would be Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus. Why? Because he he actually took on, you know, the sins of Israel and he didn't sin when he was on the planet. And, you know, basically, and he went into the, the right hand of the, of the father and he's 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 there. You know what I'm saying? He, he He's done his part. He's already in that in that in that portion of it. You know what I'm saying? So to speak. So us walking around on the earth, man, no, nah, we're, we're not um, we're not sinless, man. But let's get some of these precepts. Uh, let's go to chapter thirty eight. 
Psalms 38 and um, verse 18. Uh, let me see here. Salakia. Yeah. yeah, let's just get straight to the point. Verse 18. Psalms 38 and 18. For I will declare my iniquity. See, I will be sorry for my sin. See? Now, and actually, you know, um, out about. You know, I, I, I think about, about, about because that was um that could have had him put to death. You know, as far as like um you know um committing adultery, um sending um. Cheating. Trying to be. Um. This was an ongoing thing with David. He a lot of the psalms were him asking for forgiveness and and and, and yeah, how about Shimei was shot having mercy on him, man. You know, and we're still in that state right now. But Yahweh Shai did come. Don't get me wrong. The new covenant. You know, he 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 started it. It, it, it began, but we're kind of caught up in between because we're not quite there yet. We're not finished up yet. You know what I'm saying? Like we're not we don't have the new bodies that we need to actually not sin anymore. You know, as long as we're in these these fle these fleshly bodies, there's no way around it, man. You know, well, our, our, our righteousness is going to be seen to the Lord as as, you know, Filthy rags, man, but he knows that we're trying. You know what I'm saying? So let's get another precept. Psalms 51. Another one um, of King David, right? And now this is going off to Nathan the prophet when David done what he done with um, Beersheba, that adultery, man. Verses 3 through 5. Let's get that. Uh, let's see. We might be able to start up a little bit more. Let's just start from the top. Matter of fact, it's entitled a contrite sinner's prayer for pardon. And, you know, the reason why I kind of, you know, why, you know, this came up, you know, in my spirit because I was driving. and I was listening to the lesson and I and it started to make me think on things that I had done in my life. You know, and I had to, you know, as I'm driving, I was praying to you. How about she I was shy to please have, you know, um, um, mercy on me or whatever. Right. So. Let's start from the top. Psalms 51. And, and this is um where. um. King David prayed that pray for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shad and I take away his Holy Spirit from him. It says to the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone in to Bathsheba. And that's when he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Have mercy upon me, O Yahweh, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. See? So why is he saying that? Because he, hey, he, he, he knows that he needs it. We all do. Verse 2, it says, uh, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. See? So he acknowledged it. So he goes on to say, um, let's get that verse. Uh, Let's start at verse 9. He says, Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all of mine iniquities. Create me a clean heart, O Yahweh, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. See? Because that, you know, that was a serious um, um, hookup that was going on, man. Because he could have easily had been put to death. But had he not been put to death, he could have been out here bugged out. He, he remembered what happened to Saul as far as um, the Lord taking away his Holy Spirit from him. Right? And this is what Yahweh Shai said. I mean, um, Salakia Yahweh said. Um, he says, if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me. And that also 
they have walked contrary unto me and that I also have walked contrary unto them. See, the Lord is going to walk contrary unto you if you don't confess your sins, man. And have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham. Will I remember? And I will remember the land. See? And that's going back into our past lives as well. You know, those lives that we've lived before, man. Because, you know, Israel is a stiff, man. Our people are hard-headed as hell, man. stiff neck and arrogant. You know, they don't think that they've ever done anything wrong. Like, what did I do? You know, that that's like, um, that they, you know, our people got a, an accountability problem, man. They, you know, they're not accountable for the things that they do. But see, when you come into this truth and you sincerely are into this thing, you're going to say to the Lord, hey, look, I done wrong. I, I definitely done that, Lord. I messed up for real. And you're going to feel sorry about it. You're going to feel bad about it. Lord, please forgive me for that. You know, please have mercy on me. You know, you're going to feel bad about certain things, man. But see, we're, 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 hey, we're to, um, what does it say here? It says, Verse 40, again, if they con shall confess their iniquity. See, you, you have to confess it. Lord, I done this. I done that. You can't shun away from it because guess what the Lord said he's going to do? <laughs> he's going to be contrary against you. And that's the last thing you want is the enemy. Um, you, you want the Lord as your enemy. You crazy? That's, that's a no win. You're not winning, man. Right? But it says, with... Um, if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers. So we're, we, we got to confess the iniquity of our fa fathers because we are our fathers, basically, man. With their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them. Let's read that in the NLT. Let's see how it reads in the New Living Translation. It says, but at last, my people will confess their sins and, and the sins of their ancestors for portraying me and being hostile on, towards me. And that's our people, man. Our people are very hostile towards the Lord, man. That, that, that's the ones that pull the shoulder. You know what I'm saying? When the Lord, he's extending, uh, you know, a hand of, 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 of pretty much, hey, come back to me. I got you. That, that's going off into one. Um, what's that? Isaiah uh, chapter 50. I think, no, 55, I think it is. Where he says that he'll pardon us abundantly. Matter of fact, I can get that too. So lock you. Let me yeah, let me grab that real quick. Isaiah 55 and 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto Yahweh and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will ab abundantly pardon see so the Lord will abundantly pardon man but you have to com confess how do you turn back to the Lord how do you call on the Lord in that manner you have to confess what you've done look Lord I, I was wrong matter of fact in the NLT it says seek the Lord while you can find him call on him now while he is near, let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to Yahweh that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God for he will forgive generously. See? So when you go back into this Leviticus chapter um, 26 and verse 40. Get straight to it. And if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of, of their fathers with which with their trans, their trespass, which they trespass against me. Lock you. And that also they have walked contrary unto me. Let me get that back again. If they shall confess their iniquity, confession is, is, is you know, I you're actually saying that was me. 
You're not trying to um, hide shit. You're not trying to cover shit. You're not trying to use a false ass alibi. Uh, 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 you're not trying to place blame on no one else as to why you done with you. Well, if it wasn't for such and such. No, if you straightforward confess your, you know, your iniquity, it says in the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me. And that also they have walked contrary unto me and that I also have walked contrary unto them. That's a cold one, too. Let me get that in the NLT. Verse 41. When I have turned their hostility back on them and brought them to the land of their enemies, then at last their stubborn hearts will be humbled and they will pay for their sins. So the Lord, hey, you can either do it willingly or the Lord will force it out of you. And a lot of our people are going through that, that very, and they know, they be, a lot of our people be knowing in the back, see, the, see we have the spirit of the Lord, uh, uh, you know, embedded within us. We have a different spirit than these other nations. We know when, when something is wrong, we, cause our conscience will eat at us about it, but our people are so pride, prideful, they won't admit it. They, they can't just, it hurts them to the core to come forth and say, yeah, I was wrong in that. I shouldn't have done that. Nope, they'll, they'll go to the grave with it. And that shit, and the Lord don't be playing with them, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Let's see what this one in um, Joshua, Joshua 7 and 19. Joshua 7 and 19. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to Yahweh God of Israel and make confession unto him and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And this is going off into, um, let me see how they got it titled. Yep, Israel is defeated by I. And the reason why we were defeated, and you have to imagine, you know what I'm saying? Because the Lord gave us strict instructions as to what to do going into this war. Don't take certain things. Don't do this. Don't do that. And this guy, Akan, he ended up taking some of the possessions of the Lord, so to speak. And, and he got judged, man. But he brought judgment upon all Israel because we're all a body. And that's going off into that new covenant as well. When the new covenant is actually in order and actually in play, you know, so to speak. All of Israel, northern kingdom, southern kingdom, two thirds, all of us are going to be on one accord, keeping the law, statutes and commandments because they're going to be written on our minds, heart and soul. So we're going to be one body. And so the same way, you know, you think like, well, what about those men that got killed? And, and, and who knows what they was doing, too, because it could have been some somewhat of some sin in their lives where the Lord set the asses up to actually get knocked off because. You know, man's goings of the Lord. And the Lord could have set those guys up through that situation. We don't know because the Lord's ways are higher than our ways. But the situation that's being said here is, is basically from the uh, outsider looking in, is innocent men lost their lives in a war because you were disobedient to the Lord. And, and what Joshua is telling him to do, he's like, hey, man, confess what you've done. Right? Confess. Let's go back to that again real quick. Yeah, that's a very uh 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 you know you got to read through it. It's it's a it's a um interesting story. Let me read it in the NLT. Then Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, by telling the truth. Make your confession and tell me what you have done. Don't hide it from me. Verse twenty. Achan replied, It is true, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. Among the plunder, I saw a beautiful robe from Babylon, 200 silver coins and a bar of gold weighing more than a pound. I wanted them so much that I took them. They are hidden in the ground beneath my tent with the silver buried deeper than the rest. See? And so he confessed it. But still, he had to be punished for that. You know, so certain sins, you know, I mean. To be honest with you. The wages of sin is death. And though we may confess to the Lord, you know, certain things, that doesn't mean that you're off the hook. That's what all sin, you know what I'm saying? You're not off the hook. 
but it's better that you confess so you know what I'm saying you know hey a lot of the times you know hey the, you know sometimes the Lord will show um, some mercy or some leniency you see but at this particular time right here you know the Lord wasn't playing no games because he was he was setting setting the stage so to speak for how serious you know what I'm saying he wanted us to be as far as um, keeping his law, statutes, and commandments and doing what he said to do. You know, so we don't know all men got different situations. Like, you know, with, with, with David, David even had to pay for his sins. Though the Lord didn't punish him like he should have been punished, so to speak. But he did still have to pay for his sins. You know, because you, you can see how his house went, um, you know, was wrecked. You know, his sons coming up against him. One of his sons was trying to um, take his throne. You know, um, you had... Uh, it was just chaos in his house, man. He, he was dealing with his concubines, you know, in front of the um, front of Israel. All kinds of stuff was going on, man. So, you know, we do still pay, but the Lord, the scriptures actually talks about um, us not actually having the, the judgment that we really should have. Because really, when you think about it, the things that Israel have done, the type of adultery that we committed against the Lord, none of us should be alive, really, in reality, you know, but hey, man. Through the leniency or the, the mercy of the Lord, you know, and, and, and what he remembering what he what he promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He has always kept a remnant of us, man. So let's move on to another uh, precept. And he's pretty much all Old Testament. Second Samuel. Twelve and thirteen. And it um, is entitled David confesses his guilt. And this is the situation where, you know, a hey, what Nathan was on David's head, man, you know what I'm saying about what he had done, you know what I'm saying? As far as that adultery, second Samuel 12 and 13. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Right. How be it, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So she was pregnant with that first son. But, you know, end up she had um, King Solomon, of course. But, yeah, uh, you know, that first son, you know, the Lord knocked off, man. And Nathan departed from his house and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David. And it was very sick. And then it goes off into the, lo the loss of the child. Right. And um and 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 it says um in the NLT it says David begged Yahweh to spare the child. He went without food and lay all night on the bare ground. The elders of his household pleaded with him to get up and eat with them, but he refused. Then on the seventh day the child died. David's advisors were afraid to tell him. He wouldn't listen to reason while the child was lit. While the child was ill, they said, "What drastic thing will he do?" When we tell him the child is dead, but you know, but what David did was he got up and, and he, he went on about his life, man. You know what I'm saying? He, he kind of he was like, fuck it, because he, he knew what it was. But that was a part of the judgment. You know, that child from that adulterous. Um, and that's why you see a lot of these children be dying, too, because they be coming from adulterous um, um, relationships, man. And, 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 and on the low, a lot of people, some, you know, that husband may have a he may suspect it. Like, my wife, this bitch cheating, man. That child may not even be mine. And then all of a sudden, it'll be like, you know, some of these, these children will make it out of the womb and live to be 7, 8 years old, 9, 10. They'll even live to be 15, 16. The Lord will, will, will take their asses out at a graduation, you know what I'm saying, party or some birthday party or some shit and, and, and judge their asses, man, you know, when, when you're at your happiest moment. You know, the scriptures talks about um the Lord... You know, uh, roughly paraphrasing will catch you um, suddenly. You know, while you're in your comfort, while you're in while you're in your security, he'll 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 place punishment upon you. Everything was going good. The music was going. Everybody was having a good time. You know, and then all of a sudden, everybody was going home, and and and, and, and that child that you know full well, the woman be knowing full well, you knew full well that this wasn't his child, and then even in um. After the death, you still won't even tell the, the, the man that that was never his child. He's paying for, you know, um, money. You know, he's raising the child. 
and then you you meeting up with this same nigga secretly. That happens all the time. How's my son? Oh, he's doing fine. He just got A's and this and B's and that and this and that and the third. And this nigga ain't giving up no money. He's allowing the husband that's actually married to this bitch to actually raise his child and she'll know it. So when you see a lot of these children get killed like that where they die a drastic death, that's a lot of the times be what, what, what be done happen, man. And that's in the apocrypha as well. That whoredom bed, man. These children that are, 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 that are created, uh, you know, uh, through adultery and whoredom. And a lot of women, man, hey, the, the black, so-called black woman, scant with it. She'll know full well that's not that man's child. She'll know full well she will allow that man to raise that child. And then all of a sudden, his ass get knocked off. Now everybody boohooing and need a GoFundMe. And they let balloons and shit go, man. Anyway, let's move on to the next precept. 2 Samuel chapter 24. And this is just things that I was, you know, um, thinking on today, you know, or, you know, just meditating on because, you know, we all got shit that we've done, man. I, I, I can remember shit back when I was 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You know, as shit comes up in my mind, I always say, Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me, Yahweh, by Shemel, was shot for that. You know, and though it was years back, you still should be praying to Yahweh, by Shemel, was shot for forgiveness, man. It's very important. This is going, it says judgment for David's sin, right? Verse 10, you, it's also this account is in First Chronicles chapter 21, um, 7 through 17. Uh, it says, and David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the, the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. So when you do that, you know. Cause the Lord, He knows. Now, what you know, it's almost like a parent. Say, like you a parent, and you know what the child done done. This motherfucker just standing there lying to you, and, and and you know what that does? He's trying to make it seem like you fucking stupid, and that sets a parent off. So think about the Lord. Oh, you think I'm stupid? You don't you don't think that I don't know everything? You know, parents, man, they be on your ass. See, kids always think that they're, they can outsmart their parents. But guess what? The parents always see they, 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 they done done everything that your ass done done before. They know. That's how they know to watch. You know, certain things to watch for on your ass. But when it comes to the Lord, you just like, well, I, you know, I ain't do shit. I ain't do that. What the fuck you mean? The Lord seeing you. He saw it. He know you done it. And you just going to still deny it. OK. All right. OK. At least when you confess something, you like, you know, you can get someone of some mercy. Some leniency, so to speak, you know, or you definitely mercy. Like, well, all right, well, at least you're telling the truth. You know, but when 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 a person is lying about some shit they done, hey, hey, that, 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 you're going to get the business, man. And that's with anybody. That's just like a dude. He know he know the woman cheating. Bitch, I just seen you text and I, I'm going through your phone. I'm, I just seen a video of you sucking this nigga's rod. What the fuck you mean? You and she and you still come up. Show what about when you well, what about when you see and that, that 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 just pisses a person off instead of just coming clean just come on come clean i see it what are you lying for i see the video anyway let's go let's get another preset job 33 verse 27 I got a couple more precepts. We'll end out soon. Yeah, it's important, man, to just, you know, just ask for forgiveness, man. Because we're, we're in these fleshly bodies and we're going to do shit. But don't be willingly, you know, I always pray to Yahweh, please help me to not sin presumptuously. Or help me to not sin on purpose. And, and please forgive me for the things that I've done unknowingly. Because we, 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 hey, we're in these fleshly bodies, man. You're not going to get around it. So the little debate about the new covenant, hey, we're not fully into no new covenant, man. It was one guy that said that he couldn't die. Like, nigga, you on this planet, nigga, what the fuck you mean you can't die, nigga? You crazy? That's how far he was going off into how delusional he was about the new covenant. Okay, but um, this is Job 33 and 27. He looketh upon men 
And if any say I have sinned and perverted that which was right and it profiteth me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit and his life shall see the light. Let's get that in the NLT, New Living Translation. He will declare to his friends, I sinned and twisted and I sinned and twisted the truth, but it was not worth it. God rescued me from the grave and now my life is fulfilled with light. Yes, yes, God does th these things again and again for for people. So, you know, hey, it's just important to confess your sins, man. Because it really, in reality, by you saying that you didn't do what the Lord know you done done, you're basically calling the Lord a liar. And we know that the Lord can't lie. You you just setting yourself up for some, you might as well just give it up, man. You might as well just, just, just go ahead and just say it, man. Proverbs 28 and 13. Got like two more precepts after this. Yeah, all right, Rathazai. 28 and 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. See? And that's another important um, key to it, too. Confessing it, not only confessing it, but forsaking it. That's what repentance is. That's why you got these Christians that's running around out here talking about um, the, the laws done away with. The hell you mean? They just out here like, well, you know, the Lord died for our sins, so, you know, I might as well just do what I want to do. Because I'm already saved by grace. That bullshit. That's going to get a lot of our people destroyed. Right there. Because again, let's get it. Let's see how it reads in the NLT. New Living Translation. Proverbs 28 and 13. People who conceal their sins will not prosper. So you're not going nowhere. You're just going to be stuck in, 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 in that revolving cycle. Right, right where you are. You know, you're just going to be like a dog chasing his tail. But if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. So you have to confess. Not only do you confess, but you don't. That's like I'm telling you, man, there's people every day they get up. Lord, forgive me, Jesus. You know, in full well that what you're doing is wrong. You you thinking that you can just say that I'm wrong every day, but you're just doing it. What are you what are you what are you even saying it for? Why are you why are you 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 confessing to the Lord today and you're saying forgive me for it. But, you know, full well. You got a damn date with the same bitch you you know you 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 committed adultery with later on today. You meeting up with her weekly, couple of times a week, but you still saying, "Lord, forgive me." No, you 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 need to be saying, "Lord, forgive me," and, and not in the name of White Jesus neither, because the Lord's name is not Jesus. The Lord's name is Yahweh Shai, and the Father's name is Yahweh. But you need to be repenting to the Father Yahweh in the name of His Son Yahweh Shai, and 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 turning from that shit. And if you got any problems with it, you might need to go on a fast and pray. Pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to help you with problems that you have. You know? You can pray for temperance. You can pray for patience. You can pray for, you know, um, um, self-discipline and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to grow. But you don't willingly or, or, or sin presumptuously, man. You just willingly. Like, ah, oh, well, I already know I'm saved by great. That's one thing that these Christians, two thirds of these Christians, they're going to be done up, man, when it comes straight because they believe, first off, in the idol. And they, they won't even confess that. Well, Lord, I, I confess that I've been worshiping an idol for these amount of years that I've been going to that church. I've been, you know, uh, 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 worshiping my oppressor. No, Jake, not trying to do nothing like that. They're trying to save the oppressor. They're trying to tell you that it don't even matter what the Lord even looked like. So they taking it even further. They doubling down on this bullshit, man. Anyway, let's get this one in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 3 and 13. And I know these are not really the, the interesting lessons that people like to listen to, but hey, these are the ones. Hey, these, 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 you know, these basics, man. But they're 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 serious, man. These are things that we need. Jeremiah 3 and 13. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. That thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O ye backsliding children, saith the Lord, Yahweh, for I am married unto you. And I will take you one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Woo. Let's get that in the NLT. New Living Translation, Jeremiah 3 and 13. Only acknowledge your guilt. 
admit that you Salakia. admit that you rebelled against your God and committed adultery against him by worshiping idols under every green tree. Confess that you refuse to listen to my voice. I, the Lord, Yahweh, have spoken. And that's what I was just talking about with, um, you know, white Jesus, Islam, goddamn Buddhism. You got Jake that's into Hinduism. All manner of bullshit. Rastafarians. Like, no, nah, man, that's all idol worship. Verse 14, it says, return home, ye way, you, you wayward children. Say the Lord, for I am your master. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, one from this town and two from that family, from wherever you are scattered. And I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. See? And this is what the Lord is doing in these last days with the men that go out on the highways and byways, man. He's giving us shepherds, man, that care. Because a damn T.D. Jakes, he don't give a fuck about you. Creflo Dollar, you know, Dr. Leroy Thompson, Paula Whites and all these different pastors and, 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 and so-called prophets and prophetess. Man, they don't give a fuck about you, man. Because first off, they're not even telling you who the Lord is. They're not telling you the truth. What's going on now? They're not telling you the true name of the Father, Yahweh. They're not telling you the true name of the, um, the, uh, his son, Yahweh Shai, our Savior. They're not even telling you that you're Israelites. They're not telling you what we need to actually be, um, um, to, to, to get rid of this sickness, this illness that's on us as a nation. All they want you to do is come through and put that A, a very good debate. I'm actually um, I'm going back to listen to um, a few more of those videos. I like to save them in my playlist. You know what I'm saying? And um, have a I got a nice playlist of of, of nice um, uh, uh, lessons, man, from all the apostles, elders, and stuff like that, man. Like you know, you gotta you, get, you say you know. I know the apostles. They always say take notes, and you can take notes. You got notes where you got a note app, or so to speak, in your phone. You can take notes right in your phone, but you should be saving those. You could save those videos on YouTube. Save them. If it's a, 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 you know, a video, a lesson that, that can help you out, where well, you need to probably learn those precepts anyway, but just save the video. You can always go back and listen to the video, and you can actually put the, you know, the, um, the playlist on, 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 on just play and loop all your videos and just have videos playing, man, in your free time, you know, or, or, or as you're sleeping or whatever the case may be. But yeah, man. Save save those things, man. One um, verse eight. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, bro. If we say we have not sinned, we have we make Him a liar. I just said that, and His word is not in us. You out here talking about you ain't done nothing. But that 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 kills, you know, Captain Tazariax, uh, you know what I'm saying? Where and us given sin. Lying. Oh Lord, you lying, not me. I don't know what you talking about. What you talking about? I ain't done nothing. That's you. You lying on me, Lord. Be in that state of mind. You want to be just just go ahead and give it up, man. And that's a part of being a damn man and a woman. Just be straight up. Like I said again, man, you know, I always pray, Lord, please, because I don't want to commit no presumptuous sins. Uh, you know, I, I always pray, too, that, you know, you how I can get instead of having a contrite spirit, man, or mercy, um, um, you know, um, a contrite, meek and humble spirit. I pray for that as well. 
Because the Lord, he deals with um, humble. Because because when you're when, when you're when you're saying that you're not sinning, that you I ain't done that liar. And also that's pride. And the Lord hates pride. That's one of the things that the Lord hates. He that that's an abomination to the Lord, man. He hates a prideful look. You know. Because I'm telling you, man, I, especially amongst our women. Oh, my goodness, bro. Hey, no accountability. They've taken on, on real. Hey, they've really taken on the mindset of the of the serpent. Um, Esau, Edom, man. And, and that motherfucker don't have no um, no type of accountability. Esau, the so-called white man, you get to talking about things like uh, uh, slavery. Oh, well, that was a long time ago. I had, you know, they, 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 they you know, they speak wickedly uh, con concerning oppression. That's like a lot of our women, they'll speak wickedly concerning um, shit that they done done to you, man. I was in Walmart earlier, man. I couldn't even believe, man, I had to get away from that bitch. Everybody looking down the aisle, she in there, motherfucker this, motherfucker that, you know, cussing. Like, bitch, you do realize you in Walmart. Nope, going hard body. Some nigga was on the other line accusing her of something. <laughs> this one dude was looking from way down. He was, a matter of fact, he wasn't even in the aisle. He was at way back at the damn freezers and he looked. I seen him shaking his head. Everybody was shaking their head like this bitch crazy. I guess she probably kind of seen some people like, and maybe she just caught herself. But I'm like, God damn, but you loud as hell. Like you just in here just going hard on, you know, on FaceTime. I, I seen, cause I, I kind of passed her and I seen her, you know, she had her phone up. She had two phones actually. But you know, um, some nigga was on, on, on the FaceTime with her and stuff that she was clowning. I'm like, but well, damn, I mean, this nigga's not even in front of you. You, you, this is, you can't hold this conversation until you get back into your vehicle. She was going hard as shit, loud as hell, like it was a real fight in the street, man. And they didn't surprise me. I was in the chocolate aisle, actually, looking for some damn 100%, um, you know, or some chocolate that didn't have fucking soy in it. And like um, Elder Malcolm would say, it's hard, it's hard to find. I didn't find out one piece of chocolate in that place you know i know it's walmart but still they got dark chocolate you know certain percentages on the cocoa or whatever whatever the coca but not one everything i picked up has soy in it but i'm standing right there and she's a matter of fact we was the only ones in that aisle but people was passing by looking like what the fuck is wrong with this bitch crazy bro anyway i'm gonna you know i'm gonna end out there you know but i wanted to just touch on this subject of um Confessing our sins and doing it daily, man. Doing it daily. Please forgive me, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, for the sins I've committed knowingly or unknowingly. Because sometimes we fuck up, you know. Sometimes we fuck up because we're in these sinful bodies, man. We're not in, you know, we're not in those new bodies, man. You're not going to, um, you, you're not going to beat that. You can try as hard as you want. You even got like IUIC. Talking about keeping the law, statutes and commandments, keeping the law, you know, they, they, that's pretty much how they're telling you that um, you're overall going to be saved. You know, but they won't tell you the true name of the father and son, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Well, all the commandments, man, we, we, we can't uh, 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 straight keep as far as like, you know, um, certain laws anyway. You know, but that's not what's going to... Um, that's not what, what's going to save you. That's not going to get, that's not enough. Because Yahweh Shai was the ultimate sacrifice. That's what's going to save you. Him being the ultimate sacrifice. Him, you believing on what he done for you. We don't know the true name of the father and the son. They, they got all kinds of shit going on that they saying, man, leading the flock astray. You know, we're not saying go out here and, and sin presumptuously. You most definitely try your hardest to keep these laws, statutes, and the commandments to the best of your ability. But just know that what Yahweh side, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus, is, is what's, what, what gets us, you know, that's the ticket. It's not nothing that you're doing, but out of respect, out of love, we try our hardest to, 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 to do what he told us to do.
to the best of our ability, man, on this side and these bodies. Because we're filthy, man. We're filthy as hell. You should be happy that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, gave you a, 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 an opportunity, man, you know what I'm saying, to be in this truth, man. And we're praying that he would not take away his Holy Spirit from us. That's why I read that Psalms 51 with King David. He prayed that the Lord would not take away his Holy Spirit from him, man. That's something I pray for every day. I pray for that a few times a day, man. I don't know, five, six, seven times a day. Mercy. Please have mercy on me, Yahweh. Please don't blow out my candlestick or take away your Holy Spirit from me, you know? Help me to be meek, humble, and contrite in spirit and not puffed up. I pray that all the time, man. I'm sure I'm going to pray it a couple of times before I even lay down. I definitely pray, pray for it before I lay down. No. Praying for it in the Hebrew as well. So I'm going to end out there, man. I pray that this lesson was edifying. With that, Kwame Yashallah and the Baba Ball.